Today we're going to go through the process of changing automatic transmission fluid. We're going to use the wonderful 2005 Stratus up here, go through that process, talk about some of the specs and some of the things that we need to pay attention to. Let's talk about some of the equipment we need to get started. I like to get all these things out first so that I can do the job without having to run around the shop in the process. So I've got an oil caddy and oil drain here, and then this is a typical fill container or fill funnel for automatic transmission fluid, helps me get to the fill location. And then I've looked at all data and found my spec, a typical refill after a drain on this is about four quarts. So I've got about four quarts of the ATF plus four, which is the specific fluid for this car. There's a lot of different designs for automatic transmissions and how to remove and replace the fluid. This particular pan does not have a drain plug on it. We're gonna have to be careful and have some planning about how to capture as much of this fluid as we can and not make a mess. So we're gonna start by removing the bolts. So one of the things that we did, because this pan does not have a drain plug, is I left one of the bolts just a little bit loose on the outside here. I didn't want to remove it all the way. And then I went around and removed more of the bolts. And as we got enough of the bolts out for the pan to drop and dip, you can see some of the fluid is coming out now. I've got to be cautious about controlling that flow. I don't want to let the pan fall. It's going to make a great big mess if I let that happen. Let's talk about some other tips for the service while this drains. So we talked about slowly lowering this pan so that we can control the flow of fluid. Another thing is that if we can catch this fluid and measure it, that's going to help us be quicker in this process. Generally, if I'm going to do a transmission service, it would be a good idea for me to check the fluid level before the service, if that's easy to do. Then when I drain the fluid, if I was to catch it in a graduated container like this one, I would know exactly how much came out and that can help me with exactly how much to put in before I start checking for fluid level. Another option to keep track of fluid coming out of the transmission, some oil caddies have a little pipe and a sight glass sort of thing on the side that has markings and graduations on it for volume. If you've got one of those, you can get a small twist tie from garbage bags or like a loaf of bread. Use that as a marker. You can set it before you start the draining process and then that'll show you how much has been added from your baseline. Now that the draining has slowed substantially, I've taken out one of the last two. We'll take the final one out. I'm still going to want to support this pan and make sure that it doesn't fall. There's going to be some fluid left in it. Here with the pan down, you can see there's still quite a bit of fluid left in the pan. With the pan down, now I can see some of the components of the transmission here. At the base, I've got my filter. I can see just the end of my dipstick here where I'm going to measure transmission fluid level when we're done. Generally, as part of the service, we're going to replace this filter along with the gasket that was on the pan. To take this one off, I've just got to apply a little bit of pressure and pop it out. It's common that the, there will be additional fluid in this filter assembly. When I've got this off, it's important that I pay attention to whether or not my O-ring came with. Sometimes that O-ring will get stuck in the valve body. I need to make sure that that comes off and I only have one O-ring when I go back together. Here is our new replacement filter assembly. Double check that I've got the O-ring here. I'm gonna take just some of the transmission fluid and lubricate that O-ring. Place it back up and make sure that it snaps in. With this pan off, there's a couple things I wanna do before reassembly. One is we're gonna to go to the solvent tank and we're gonna clean this out. Typically, there's also going to be some sort of magnet in the base of the pan. This magnet is there to catch debris from clutches and other materials within transmission as they go through wear. I wanna make sure I clean this as well as the pan. Another important note on a stamped steel pan like this, I wanna make sure that everything is flat at the flange. Oftentimes, the, depending on the type of gasket that gets applied, if this were to be over torqued, the pan will actually become peaked at every fastener. And if it peaks at every fastener, then it becomes very difficult to seal in the future. And I need to make sure that's flat. A quick way to do that is to lay it on a welding table or some table that I know is flat or use a straight edge. If I find that the pan is distorted, my best means is to replace it. My other means is that I could attempt to straighten it myself, but that's gonna take some extra skill and a lot of extra time.
With the pan all cleaned up, I want to verify my fit of the gasket. So this gasket is going to have somewhat of a direction to it to match the pan. When ordering these kits, it's important to make sure there may have been multiple transmission offerings for a specific vehicle. With my gasket laid out, this one is quite loose. I'm going to use a couple bolts to try to keep it in place. Some gaskets will even hold the bolts in place like this one does, and that'll make sure that everything gets lined up. With a gasket like this, I generally want to install it dry unless the manufacturer tells me to do otherwise. I start these bolts by hand. I want to leave them loose until I get all the rest started. If it's difficult to reach certain spots, I could use a socket and extension like this just to help me get things started. With all of the bolts started, I'm going to now run them up until I make contact and then I can go about my torque sequence. Generally with a large pan like this, I'm going to have a torque sequence that works from the center and then goes outward in a circle. I want to make sure I follow that procedure and that I'm not going to use the electric impact to run these up because I probably will exceed the torque pretty quickly. So I've got all the bolts ran up. Now we're going to torque them. So I've got my torque wrench here. Factory spec was 165 inch pounds. Keep in mind that the breakover on my torque wrench is going to be very mild at this level of a torque. I'm going to use some brake clean before I move on to make sure I don't have any fluid left behind. Next we're going to pull out the dipstick and get a funnel inserted so we can pour some of our fluid in. We're going to put in just over three quarts. I like to keep track of this with the lids from the bottles on my toolbox. Next I'm going to hook up the exhaust hose and get that connected to the muffler. And then we're going to move on over to the control on the wall. We're going to switch that to the on position and make sure that we've got some extraction going. Next, I'm going to start the car. And once we get the car started, we're going to want to hold our foot on the brake and work through each gear position for about five seconds each to get flow and fluid throughout all the different orifices and clutches within the transmission. I'm then going to go back and check the fluid again and see where we're at. I'm going to have to clean off the dipstick pretty well. After pouring fluid through the dipstick tube, there's going to be a lot there that the dipstick catches on the way down. Once I've got that cleaned off, I can check and see. And here you'll see there's a cold and hot set of marks, and we're not quite registering on the dipstick, so we're going to add some more fluid. After adding the fluid, I'm going to pay attention to the temperature of the vehicle. A quick way to do this is to utilize the engine coolant temperature gauge, make sure that we get to operating temperature before we really look at the fluid level. So here we added some more fluid. We're going to double check again. The vehicle's now warmed up, and you can see we're right between the markings for the hot fluid level position. So we can go ahead and clean up. This job is complete.